So here we are again, making another video about coffee. And this time it's about adding a thermometer to a popper or an air roaster in this case. I'm just gonna use our Nostalgia popper, but this goes for pretty much all of them. And um, it comes because of one of the questions in our coffee library about temperature measurement, etc. Uh, was referencing this really old article we have about how you'd put a, uh, in the top of a popcorn popper, you'd put a dial face thermometer down into the coffee. And uh, the person was frustrated with that. And I just felt like such a jerk for <laughs> having that article still be up there and be our only thing about putting up adding temperature measurement to a popper. I, I would never do that at this point. So I owe everybody, or just to forgive myself, something that I do actually do all the time. So a dial face thermometer is pretty useless with, uh, especially an air roaster, and I'll tell you why. And so a digital thermometer, uh, this is one we used to sell. We have a different model now, which is hung up in US Customs right now. So. And uh, these are actually ones that we are gonna start selling. So I'm gonna use this because I know it and I know the measurements on it and stuff. Um, you can also use, I really like the type of thermocouple that is uh, a raw thermocouple wire. In other words, it, uh, it doesn't have a, a well, a metal well, and inside this is the thermocouple. And I like those because they're really sensitive. They just change instantly with temperature. This one, is only three millimeters in diameter. And uh, it, uh, I had to think about that for a second, diameter, yes. And uh, anyway, if you're intimidated by devices, you really don't need to be intimidated by a digital thermocouple. You simply plug that in the right way, turn it to F for Fahrenheit, and it'll just read your temperature. There's nothing to it. So, um, you can get fancier data loggers, but what's the point? Okay, so I'm gonna talk really quickly. I'm gonna keep this really short about temperature measurement in coffee roasting, let alone in an air roaster, which has a whole set of problems. So, um, so temperature measurement in roasting is just a whole conundrum. And this goes from a home roaster, from this thing, or what you find in a, a thrift store and you roast coffee in, to professional roasters, which uh, in, a, in a way, professionalizing temperature measurement, a lot of that happens because you're just using the same machine all the time with the same temperature measurement device in the same spot, and you can calibrate to your own standards, whatever it is. If you have first crack at 395 Fahrenheit, 405 Fahrenheit, 375 Fahrenheit, whatever it is, you get to know that and you know what's happening. And that's what's important about temperature measurement. You are, uh, unless you have a, some sort of fully automated roaster and then I just don't want to even talk to you basically, but you're, you're, you're the person roasting. You are, you are the controller. The roaster person is the device, <laughs> so to speak, making decisions, controlling, using, smell and sight and uh, sound and and devices to, uh, to to check that. So this is an input for you as a person. And the thing is, is that is that when you take that device, let's say you take that some nice commercial quality thermometer and you take it out of your drum roaster here and you put it into your let's say be more roaster or bullet roaster or another drum roaster, it's just gonna read different things. You're measuring different things because the device is positioned differently. So you can have the same device, move it from one roasting technology to another. Uh, you position it here, it reads one thing. You position it here, it reads another thing. It's measuring a combination of surface temperatures usually. Um, I don't know of anything that reads internal bean temperature. People talk about that in theory. I'm sure there's some way. I don't know what it is right off the hand. You're reading a contact temperature between, you know, this as the beans hit against it, but it's always gonna be reading a combination of the environment temperature around it, the heat source, 
Um, a lot of roasters have a thermometer positioned in the input air and the output, output air of a, of a roaster and in the bean, uh, probing the beans itself. You could do all that with a home roaster if you want. But the point is, is, is all of this has to be put in these sort of parentheses of, um, parentheses of the fact that there's a device, there's a roaster, and there's the positioning, and they're always changing. So there's no just like, here is first crack temperature. It doesn't exist in terms of comparing one thing to another. You sort of have to ballpark it. You have to hear somebody say, mine's at 405. You say, oh, mine usually starts in a nice fresh coffee at 395. So I'm gonna, you know, shift my shift my temperature measurements or my sense of what this person's saying to what makes sense for my situation. And ev sorry about that. Everybody is doing that. Every roaster uh, is doing that to some degree. Now you'd hope that a manufacturer selling a twenty-five thousand dollar machine is incredibly consistent, and one one uh, one installation of that machine is the same as another. There's other factors too. There's ambient temperature, which is huge with home roasting because you're moving your little portable device around. That's pretty much negated with professional roasters. And there's, um, there's the bean. Coffee, ma the mass of coffee that you're heating and charging with temperature, with this energy, is part of your roasting cycle. So that has thermal properties that change from coffee to coffee, depending on moisture, uh, even shape and uh, other other factors, size. So um, what I'm trying to say there is the fact that a home roaster experiences different temperatures and different information online and even your friend or your neighbor next door with the same thing is getting a different result. That makes sense. And you just have to deal with it. <laughs> so my point is that uh, whatever you do, you want to have the probe. If you're going to have one probe, you're going to you want that probe to be in in the mass of coffee as it's roasting, or as as the coffee enlarges at least to contact the probe. And um, and in an air roaster, it's one of the more problematic ways to install it because uh, the air the hot rapid airflow. You're measuring more of the air environment of the heat source or the, the, the chamber than you are the coffee, but you just have to kind of bracket that knowledge and, and accept it and adjust. So um, it's also a little bit problematic, I want to admit, that this particular machine, you, it roasts so little coffee that it's hard to get the probe into the coffee. But I'm going to do it as I would do it with any other popper. And um, let's get on to just how you actually do this. Um, so the first thing is, I, I, I just happen to have a, a massacred uh, one here. You want to just make sure you're not going to, you're going to drill into this and you want to make sure you're not drilling into uh, something like with live voltage. So first of all, <laughs> it's <laughs> Secondly, uh, so most, most air roasters and poppers have, with this design, have the vents around the side. And uh, this one, I think I've... Got it. Ah. Okay, well anyway, you can see that this, the, the vents essentially are, um, are below this housing where the hot air the, in the fan housing, and then the rest is kind of just exposed. So this is a great part to drill into, this whole sort of collar that forms the upper end. And this, this particular one, I took it off, but there's always a sort of a high heat temperature uh, cutout. Uh, device on a, any kind of popcorn pop or whatever. And this one happens to be in the front. So all I'm doing is saying, I know I can drill from the back into the model that I had, didn't massacre. And as long as it's above those vents, um, you know, preferably like half inch, quarter inch, you know, above the, the vents on the inside, I know I'm going directly in here. And you can see here, I've even have a big hole there. I don't know actually how I made that hole, but. So that tells me how this is assembled. But if you don't know how it's assembled, you're gonna to have to take it apart. You usually have to take off the four feet, the little rubber things, unscrew it and find out. You know, be safe. So don't be like me. <laughs> so anyway, our probe that we are going to be selling is 
50 millimeters long, uh, three millimeters wide, and this is an M6, metric six, uh, threaded connection. Now, as you can see, I hope, you see that it has this bolt. Now, I actually don't use that. You could put this in and then, I, I don't know how you would actually do that and then lock in the, um, the thermometer with the, with the bolt, but that would be slick if you could do that. Uh, I just take this off and I actually just rely on the fact that these threads hold it pretty well in place. And what I do is I use uh, one drill bit for the shaft to go through and, um, and then one drill bit that approximates the <clears throat> M6 and then I force, I kind of almost uh, tap out the threads in the plastic um, so it holds really securely and that will go right in to my beam mask all the way through from the outside in. So um, let's do that and I'll take some photos to show some details of what I'm doing. And I think that this length of, I, I am pretty sure I checked every popper that I have that this 50 millimeters and this distance will work with almost anything I can, I can, I know of. Um, in terms of popcorn poppers from the store, and it will work with some other air roasters too, but I'm not gonna go into that. Um, and I'm gonna explore ways that could work with a more too, but I don't know about that yet. So the first thing I do is I check my, uh, where I'm gonna be drilling, and I use this sophisticated method to do that. I take anything I have and anything else that I have <laughs> that are, are two things, and I just sort of um, see lay something flat across here, and I'm just gonna check the depth inside by holding this. Oh God, I can't really see what I'm doing here. Okay, um, so I'm gonna just hold this down where I would want the hole just above there, and that's that's the little end of my little strip there. And I'm just pinching, I'm just pinching my, um, I hope you can see this. I have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm just pinching this at that location here on my little strip. It could be anything. I could actually be measuring it, but I just, and then I'm just gonna take it and transfer that to the outside, which is, which is there. So I'm gonna make a mark. As you can tell, my camera crew is out for the day. So I'm gonna make a mark right here because I, and that's gonna be my depth. I am sure you are smart and can figure out a much better way to do that. And you know, you like you could actually measure it. I mean, I, I guess I could have with this. <laughs> Just, it's not what I did. So, uh, so yeah, that's going to put a hole in um, well above the, uh, well, little, a little bit above the vents. So it's going to be just in the side here, you know, so it'll be above this. I don't want to go into this because then I've got an air leak uh, because that's the fan and you want to focus that air should be coming out the vents. Okay, so as you can see, I was way, way off on the uh, approximating what the M6 uh, threaded part would, would do. So it appears that 1364 is, is actually quite tight. Uh, and what it, uh, 
pretty tight on that and that, that really holds it quite securely. So you can see why I just don't think it's necessary. You know, to try to get that bolt on on the inside would be, would be great, but I don't think it's necessary. And when I've done this before, these really hold in by just kind of forcing it through the plastic. And what I did before, because I didn't want to damage my thermocouple, is I found another uh, screw that was the same threading, and I used that to, to force some, make some threads kind of in here and get it all the way in. But you can see that the positioning is, is really nice. I, I'm surprised myself even <laughs> um, with my, my uh, using, the, uh, using the zip ties <laughs> there. Uh, that, that's pretty good. And, and like I said, there's a caveat with these is they roast so little coffee. That's really, I know, not going to be in the bean mass initially, but the coffee will rise up to it when it becomes important, uh, to know what the measurement, the temperature is. And, um, you know, I've got a nice solid connection. I'll work on that, but that is good enough. And, um, then I could just sit here and, uh, you know, roast and read temperature along with uh, everything else. So um, that is how you do a much better job than putting a dial face thermometer in the top of a popcorn popper to add temperature measurement to a roaster. Um, I think we sell the similar one to this. It's about uh, $16, $18. Um, these are only going to be uh, six, seven dollars. I think um, on Amazon they're generally maybe 15 or so. Um, but we ordered these directly from a manufacturer. And, um, and yeah, that's how you do it. And uh, thanks for listening. And uh, I hope that is helpful. And I would really appreciate people making comments about adaptations they make to this. Um, other roasters they use, anything to make it easier, because I'm not saying I do things the best way and certainly not the uh, slickest way. So um, thank you.